Chicken, chicken, chicken. Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike, he's Jay, he's Blake. I said, God damn! Wow, it's just like a fucking What's that like? Again? That escalated quickly. What's that like being next to that? I don't know why balls are vibrating next right now. You ride like lightning, you're gonna crash like thunder. Um, Suicide <laughs> Squad, this is a spoiler review. We've already the filmed the, spool, uh, the regular review, so if, you're, if you've not seen the movie, do not watch this. You don't want it to be spoiled and ruined for you, like many critics have done for many fans. Anyways, what I'm gonna say about this movie to start it off, we're each gonna give our thoughts on it, and then we're gonna go into the spoilers of it. For me, this movie is the Batman Forever of today. And what I mean by that is Batman Forever is a terrible movie by all critic standards if you really look at it and really just like take a deep dark stare at it it's not a great movie but fans love it it's fun it's got some really cool shit in it Val Kilmer bat nipples chick stick the car the whole fucking thing it's it's got that whole fun it's cheesy it's the editing is pretty terrible at some point there's a lot of plot holes the villains got awful but at the end of the day, when you walk away from the movie you're like fuck that was fun I can't wait to watch it again for me it's a 7.5 out of 10 Oh, you made to go? Or do you want to go? Oh, go ahead. Okay, well, there, well there's like, okay, well, I can't, I, I can't. Okay, guys, so, uh, this movie, for me, I actually had a really good time watching this film. It really is, uh, like Mike said, it was fun, it was exciting. I watched it, and I, I didn't have really any expectations going in. I wanted it to be a good movie, but I was way more excited to go see Batman vs. Superman earlier this year, so I really wasn't going in expecting it to be some giant, epic movie. But I, it turned out to be epic for me, at least. I mean, there was things about it that I didn't agree with. There were moments in it that... It kind of takes away from the plot. Like, there's plot progression problems, obviously. It's spotty in certain areas, and certain things, like, hiccup along the way, and it doesn't really flow together as well as it should have. But everybody else, and I will say, I fucking suck dick, and I'm sorry. Will Smith was great. He was number one. <clears throat> he was good. Deadshot ruled this fucking movie. And without him, I don't think the movie would have been half as good. I'm going to give it an 8.5. And I, I'm just going to say, I didn't get so fanboyish, though, about certain aspects. I mean, I didn't get, like... Rock star Mark Wahlberg is like, has anybody, can anybody honestly tell me that Bobby Beers ever saw Red Papels? Don't think so. I didn't get like that, like hardcore fanboy, but there were moments that like, there was a certain character that I was like, wow, what the fuck were you reading? I don't understand, like Southern Comfort. You must have been reading like Southern like, Homes or something when you were writing that character. But anyway, Blake, take it away. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, I don't think this was totally put together by Paula Dean. Uh, <laughs> it could have been. But, but you never know. Some of them was a little bit too sweet in points like that. No, not really. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm mostly here because a lot of my friends, even these two schlubs here, would say that you're a DC, I'm a Marvel. For most people out there that know me. You can say that. I, 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 and it's true to a lot of extent there. Um, I'm here to prove I like that, uh, that I like both. I really do. I, do too. I swing both ways. Yeah. We all do. I really do. Yeah. Um, and you know, I was, this was I'm jerking like, him off under the camera right can't, now. You can't tell it. And Jerry's cradling the ball. So if you see me trail off a little bit, that's why. Is that what the secret hand is doing? the porpoise. Oh. Move your fucking finger now. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a big finger now. It's my God damn it. My fucking coke nail, dude. I mean, it's ruining my reputation. I, you're totally ruining this review here. <laughs> Sorry. No. No, but honestly, for me, I gave it an eight. I, I had a really high expectations of this movie coming into this. Um, for a long time, uh, the only real problem that I had is that kind of the same way with what Warner and and DC are doing. For the most part, by the time I saw the movie, I had already seen the movie. Um, they kind of ruined a lot of stuff with the trailers, but they had a lot of selling to do because it's a little known property. There were some trips along the way in the second and third act. I think part of that's to do with with David Ayer's writing. I thought his directing was on point, but I will say that I kind of wait to see the Blu-ray and see the deleted scenes and possible director's cut that will kind of piece some of that together. I thought the action was really fun. Uh, the comedy worked well for characters even that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and there were some actors in there that, that had overall arcs that you wouldn't have seen coming. So I really <clears> thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I, I don't think I gave my rate. Mine was 8.5, just yeah. so we're clear. So, okay. Anyway. All right, let's talk about it piece by piece now. We're going to start with something that, for a lot of fans, is good. But for us, it's bad, and it's shockingly bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, uh, I'll start off with The Joker. Mm -hmm. The Joker. Jared Let's Leto is an amazing <laughs> actor. We did a video a while back, who should dream casting, who yeah. should play The Joker. Jared Leto was one of our picks. He's yeah. an amazing actor, and he doesn't even act poorly in this movie. It's not that he's a bad actor, but it's a terrible rendition of The Joker for me personally. Yeah. I just personally hate this version of The Joker. As you see in the, in the, in the fucking movie, he's... They, they, they played him as like, oh, he's an old-timey gangster-type Joker. It's like, okay, that's cool, but he's not. He's a meth-head gas station-type Joker that would come up to you while you're pumping gas and ask for $10. It's just, it's really just grody, and it, 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 there's no fun in his character whatsoever. It's not like sometimes he's wild and crazy, and sometimes he's really deeply disturbing. He's always just creepy scary. It, it, there's no fun, there's no goodness to it. I just did not enjoy his representation of the Joker at all. <clears throat> well, my, my take on the Joker is I didn't like him at all either, and, and that's 
that's shocking and surprising. As Mike mentioned, we did have Jared Leto as our dream casting choice for uh, the Joker. I mean, among many. But I mean, taking what he is, what Jared Leto has done over the years and his acting ability, I, I really thought he was going to nail this. Jose Canseco, that shit out of the park, but he just didn't do it. I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, it was hard for anybody, any actor, to take that role because of the giants that they're going to take, you know, step in the shoes of. But at the same time, Jared Leto, it, it just did feel. It felt like a Humphrey Bogart kind of. You know what? He was a juggalo. He's a fucking juggalo, goddamn ICP listing dude with tattoos all over his body. <laughs> that you say, hey, uh, are you are you part of my family? Are you part of the Jug family? They're like, yeah. He's like, it just. And it, the, the, there's scenes in it like when he's in the club. Like Joker just wouldn't go to the club and hang out like a crime boss, like a Falcone kind of dude or something like that. We actually talked about this off camera. He would have made a good Black Mask. He would have made a good like that kind of villain. But as far as the Joker going. You know, there's scenes in it like when he's like actually in love with Harley Quinn. Yes, he's in love with Harley Quinn in the comic books and in, in, in fiction, but it's not like the way that they portrayed it on screen. Like he's actually in love with her and obsessed with her. He, you know, he would beat the fuck out of Harley Quinn and then fucking kiss her and make out with her and fuck her and then just use her for whatever she's worth and use her up. He's just, he's not a good joker. I'm sorry. He's not. I mean, I can deal with him, but I just hope <clears throat> he's rewritten at some point later on in the Ben Affleck movie. Well, when they first cast Jared Leto, I wasn't against it at that point there. Um, now, when they first started showing some of the photos, yep. I was big time mm -hmm. against that. The one saving grace is that there's only like the one scene where he doesn't have a shirt on, so you don't really see all the stupid tattoos throughout most of it. Yeah. And you know, the one on his face is small enough that you can't really tell as much. But I swear to God, the first time that I saw him, I just wanted to ask him what time that the Limp Bizkit reunion tour was starting. <laughs> and, just think about it. But what? I, I, think, <laughs> think, think about it. I know. I was just waiting for the Riggedy remix on that. Uh, rolling. But yeah, right. He was he was rolling. No, he was he was awful. He he tried to change his voice too much. Whether that was because of the the grill that he had in, I just don't like. And again, I mentioned earlier about the overall movie. One of my problems, I think, is with David Ayer's writing style in this, and him and he and Jared Leto both wrote this character together, and I think it's that combination there. Yeah, I, I just I didn't know that he could write. I didn't know that know. Leo could even use a pencil. I think he was trying to learn. But I know that seems crazy. He can you know play music and all that. But side point, um, <laughs> that's that's what really really took it off for me. There, I just didn't enjoy him. I felt that I could I could take him or leave him in this movie. Um, his character really didn't have much of an arc at all for the whole story. So you could have left him out completely and put some more thought into it mm. for a later Batman solo movie or something else. That's later true. On. Oh, come on, Blake. <clears throat> You're trying to sweet talk me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and the hand, the hand oh, the God, that was so, so old. That was yeah. so laughably bad. It was and old. The, the worst part for me, though, the worst part with the Joker is when they're in the nightclub and Harley mm. Quinn's just go. She's hot. Harley oh Quinn's dancing on people, and Common's there, yeah. looking just like. I mean, you could have literally cast any dude off the street to play that role. He's mm -hmm. just there, and he's like, uh, 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 he, Joker, you know, puts her on his lap. He's like, "Oh, you want my girl?" And like, she's on his lap, and it's uncomfortable or whatever. But then he's like, "I don't want no beef." And oh, Joker's like, "You don't want oh, no beef. You don't, you don't want no beef, huh? You don't want no beef." Here's huh? the thing. I will it's say, an awful. I'll say what they did. One it's thing. Awful. One thing they did successful with the Joker, which I, I we talked about this a little bit last night when we were we in the movie. If they were going for like the slimy, uncomfortable Joker, the one that when he was on screen, it was just really uncomfortable, mm -hmm. they got that. They succeeded with that. Like yep. they did that with the James Bond movie with Javier when he was talking to uh, James Bond, like that weird sexual, weird thing. <clears throat> they did that in this way as far as making you uncomfortable, but I don't know if it was because he was doing such a great job showing that slimy side of Joker or it was because it was so horribly acted. You're just like, I'm uncomfortable and I feel embarrassed for you. But it could have been both. I mean, it could have been like he's doing a good enough job to show like a slimy side of the Joker, which that part I did like. Yeah, I did like well, that. Part. If they were going with that same idea right there, like kind of like Javier Bardem in uh, Skyfall was, yeah. I would like the Joker better if he pulled those stupid fucking teeth out of his face. Right? Yeah. yeah like, that would be crazy. <laughs> Look yeah. upon your work. Yeah. Um, but, but, oh, yeah. He looks like a he looks like a gang banging teenager with braces. Is what he looked like. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, he looked like Rick Ross with braces. I don't know. It was just terrible. But but this house. <laughs> and, and, and a perfect segue into that is into something good uh, is is Please. his relationship with Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. Harley Quinn in this movie, this movie should have been told, as the critics said, it's a total fucking mess when you come to the editing and the story and who cares. The way I really progressed this movie in my mind is this is a movie with a badass Suicide Squad in it, an amazing Suicide Squad Great. in it, led by Will Smith and Margot Robbie, yeah. trapped inside of a pretty cheesy movie. But Harley Quinn and Joker's relationship, that's good. That's the only really good thing that Joker does for the movie. Mm -hmm. The only thing I 
I don't like about it is the scene where uh, they're at the Acme plant or whatever. Which yeah, is Acme, right? Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, Ace. And Ace. Ace. Yeah, he, Acme is an animaniacs. <laughs> <laughs> he throws her into the vat, right? Wacko might have been better in this than the joke. Yeah. He throws her into the vat, and I'm just totally confused by that entire scene. It just seems yeah. weird, and they go in there and make out, and then he pulls out that terrible fucking just out of nowhere. It was almost like it was a, a, a involuntary reaction. They're like in the middle of a conversation, all of a sudden he's like, nah! Yeah, it's like they want to. Yeah. Uh, he had an orgasm. He came yeah, the pain. He had an orgasm. You can't come and in pain. It's bad for your people. I, I understand yeah. that when you're making out with Margot Robbie, you, you, you know, they, you're going to pre because yeah. it happens. But, yeah. like, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. The relationship status between those two was okay. I didn't mind it, but I just, again, I don't think that Joker would be that in love with anybody. The only obsession that he has in his life is fucking Batman. And, again, I don't want to fanboy out too much. And I'm not saying, like, I, I mentioned Rockstar with Bobby Beers and, like, the red lapels. I don't want to be, like, that, you know, that dude and obsessed. But it's hard to say... That when you watch this film and not kind of think that what you wanted the Joker to be, what you've seen him, and you know his other incarnations over the over the years, Mark Hamill, uh, Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, and what what Jared Leto does with this, bringing this like obsessive compulsive dude that's in love with this girl, that's like gonna beat the shit out of anybody that looks at her funny or wrong, and then <clears throat> he takes her to the you know the the plant and he's like. Would you die for me? And she's like, yeah. He goes, that's too easy. Would you live for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you it's like the Riddler, Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah a little bit too but, much. You know, I don't, but as far as Margot Robbie goes and her portrayal of Harley Quinn, spot on. I Amazing. thought it was a great role for her. I think that she did a phenomenal job. And I can't wait to see more of her in future films with DC. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She's already said that she wants to play a Mar um, Harley Quinn for life. Yeah. Um, she uh, should. Oh, yeah. It's great. I mean... I, I, with the relationship between Joker and Harley, I mean, there are good parts to it there. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of hit and miss for me right there. Like, I think that uh, the way I remember it from my experience is the Joker kind of treated Harley honestly like a stray cat. Like, yeah, she was around, yeah. he would feed her, he would take care of her, keep her around, you know, use her for company or whatever there was or whatever he could use her for. But if she got hit by a car or got, ran away or whatever, he could give two shits less. Somebody yeah. else would come along and he'll just go on from there. Um, yeah. The one thing that I did like about the Joker at all is there were a few moments when, outside of him being just sleazy, that he did just kind of go off the cuff and just do something crazy. Mm -hmm. When they broke into the prison to save, uh, you know, to break Harley out, there's like a needle gun with some sort of chemical, and he just walks up to this dead doctor and was like, "This looks neat, jam right now." Yeah. Like, yeah. Just out of nowhere, just as soon as he walked to the room. So that was kind of cool. Um, but that's that's really as far as it went for me. I could have taken it completely out of the movie and been just as happy. But you know what? The the, the, the main thing I want to say though is really uh, as far as and as cool as it is to have a Joker in a Suicide Squad movie and just to see him like the the representation of what they're going to do with uh, with the Joker. He really didn't need to be in the movie. Like he really added. They could have saved him completely. He, yeah, he hadn't. Added Other nothing. than the tie to Harley Quinn. Yeah, but he could have had a time. backstory. Yeah. yeah right. And speaking of backstories and talking about Harley Quinn, they go back and they show. Uh, we'll get into the villain and their stuff there, but the, they do the Ghostbusters thing where they show in everybody's mind exactly what they want. Yeah. And uh, her thing is Jared Leto and her to have a baby in this nice, like, comfy suburban life. And they show Jared Leto's face, and it, I, all I could think was the dude from uh, American Psycho. Yeah. That's like, all I could think. It yeah, was the perfect. Yeah. And you know, and then I thought, you know, he should have played that character. Like, a, if you want to do businessman right. Joker, I would have done that. Do an American Psycho. But you know, even in the, when you say businessman Joker, it just doesn't make sense. Like the Joker in business doesn't even make sense as far as what he's doing. Like, I mean, he would use you to get what he wanted, but overall, he's just. He doesn't care about what he's doing. He just wants to. He's got to return some video. Yeah, it's like, I wouldn't even know what to do with it if I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, another one of the. So, so, Harley Quinn is 10 out of 10. Yeah. At, sure. at, that she's perfect. She carries the whole movie. And what this movie probably should have done if you wanted to go with the legit, not just batshit, fun, crazy, weird, broken, awesome movie, they probably could have told the story from the view of Harley Quinn and Will Smith as Deadshot mm -hmm. and, and, and just built around them. But talking about that, Deadshot, Will Smith, it's Bad Boys. It's Bad Boys, Will Smith. It's Independence Day. Will Smith. It's Will Smith's return to form. We were fucking wrong about it. Oh, God. Will Smith we is were. amazing in this movie. He's hilarious. His attitude is perfect. He carries the character so well, and he brought the emotion to this movie. At one point, I'm laughing at this movie in a cheesy way, but in the, also in the way like, I can't wait to watch this scene with my friends so we can laugh at it together. Not right. like and that was a terrible way, mm -hmm. but the next moment, Will Smith made me fucking cry. Yeah. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> when he when he sees those letters from his daughter, and he's like, he's like, no, we're gonna go and do this shit. He's like, because I'm gonna 
show my daughter that I'm not a piece of shit. Right. Not only did I feel like I was going to cry, I felt like he was going to cry. He acted this character to a fucking T. He was amazing as Deadshot, and I can't believe it. <clears throat> I will agree with you 100%. I, and, I, and I actually will apologize to Will Smith and shake his hand and kiss his ring and say I'm sorry. Because he, he, you know what the thing about Deadshot is in this? He committed to the role, and you could honestly tell that he really cared about this character. And he does it overall in the film. He does it perfectly like, justice for that character. Uh, and that was the thing. I didn't go to, I was not going to see this movie and expecting to have the feels. I didn't expect to have any moment at all during the film and feel like, you know, wow, that's really hitting me in a place that shouldn't hit me. Not in the balls, but in the in the good place, in the heart. But it, it's, it's like, I didn't think, I didn't think that. It, <clears throat> oh, well, funny that. Anatomically, that's not true. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but the, the thing is, I, I really didn't expect that was going to happen, and it did. And, and the emotional impact that, that uh, Floyd or Deadshot has on, in the film is amazing. When he's talking about his daughter, the scene with Batman and Deadshot, and that whole thing where, you know, Batman's telling him, I don't want to do this in front of your daughter, and he's looking at him like, you know, in kind of almost a respectful way, like, you know, he wants to give up because he's like, at least you're giving me that option. You know, he's like, you're not going to do this. And then there's a scene later on when he's talking to him in the bar, and like, Will Smith commits so com completely to the film, not only in the terms of uh, emotional spectrum, but as well as action and comedy, and he blends it together perfectly. So, great guy. Great fucking uh, performance from him. Yeah, I was, I was happy to see a return to form for him, because his last few efforts out there have been really abysmal. Um, My concussion was okay. Yeah, well, uh, but overall. Yeah, past big time movies. Movie. I forgot about that movie, because I had a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get another one. Yep. Anyway, uh, I, just, I was afraid... <laughs> Segway. <laughs> I was just I was worried of him over Will Smith again. Honestly. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and it wasn't. It was it was a good mix of both the action and the comedy that he used to be known for. And I hope to see more of that. Mm -hmm. For sure. He even injected some fresh prints in there. I just felt for it. a second. Or two. I, I mean, it's like I like this speech. You like the Phil Jackson, but you're not the Phil Jackson. Trying to <laughs> Let's talk about the Batman thing, like okay. you mentioned. Yeah. Batman in this movie barely in it at all, but we knew that. Yeah. I mean, kind of mm -hmm. for the most part. The only problem is, is like Blake said earlier, part of the only little bit of Batman you get was already in the trailer. That scene, I want to say, I thought was terrible. The Batman on the Lamborghini scene, I thought it was shot corny. I thought it looked awful. When he goes in the water, however, to get Harley, there was some really good Batman stuff in there. She mm -hmm. pops right. out. He pumps punches her in the face. <laughs> but I was, so, I was shocked. My whole theater started laughing their asses off. Uh, he punches her in the face. Joker's nowhere to be found. And when he pulls her out, and then uh, I got pissed for a second because he goes to give her CPR. I thought Batman kissed her. And I was yeah. like, uh, I turned into a hardcore fanboy. I was yeah. like, Batman would never kiss an unconscious it, woman. It, it, you know, I was doing the same thing. It's but, hard not to be fanboy sometimes. But uh, but as it goes, I mean, he wasn't doing that. She He was trying to give her CPR and she kissed him. That scene was okay the second half of it. The first half of it was terribly edited. And yeah. I feel like I looked down for a second and I missed the whole fucking scene scene yeah. uh but the batman deadshot scene amazing mm -hmm, yeah. you actually get to see batman ask ben affleck and will smith's deadshot go at it for a minute in the street and it's so cool to see that scene the only thing i didn't like about it and we talked about this earlier is that i felt like <laughs> this is kind of corny to say but i feel like batman and like the real batman would have waited until his daughter wasn't around at all yeah, that right. kind of bothered me a little bit but i it's one of those things you got to look past i mean it's a movie yeah, uh right. but uh they needed her to be there for the scene and then of course um well i'll talk about the end sequence later i'll let you guys talk about what well that shot about. in that scene that sequence with I, I, I mentioned it a little bit how cool it was it was cool and I, I agree with you as far as like the real batman if there was such a guy there is he's really out there but he probably <laughs> would wait around possibly and not embarrass the guy in front of his daughter but then again it is a, a dead shot and he's a mercenary and he's like a hitman and world-class renowned guy so he just disappeared into the shadow and he do what I gotta do. Yeah, so take it fucking down. But you know, hey, but my daughter will be there. I'm counting on it. As far as the uh, as far as the uh, the scene with um, Joker and Harley Quinn and him jumping on the Lamborghini, yes, it does look a little cheesy. And like it kind of reminds me of Orlando Studios. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they have those like live action moments, like he's like recreating the scene. And, and you know, Batman jumps up there, and you know, it, it was it was kind of stupid to have that in there. I think that the director David Ayer just wanted to show Batman and Joker in one like single moment together. And that was fine in the makeout part, but it was funny. And like I, like the theater that we were with, they did laugh when he punched the shit out of her because he doesn't care. Like he's not gonna care. It was the same. Diff it was the same way that Deadshot when he was interacting with Margot Robbie and she called him a pussy. He goes, "I will knock you out." He goes, "I don't care if you're a girl or not." It's like it's the same kind of thing. So as far as the the Batman being in it, do I think that it added into? Yeah, it added a little flavor to it. But I do. I think that he necessarily had to be in it. No, I, I, it's the same thing with the Joker. I think the Joker could have been in it with a backstory, and I think they could have left uh, Batman alone with uh, just having a flashback with Deadshot, and that would have been. But enough. no one's ever asked for less Batman. No, so Batman always makes right. it good. Well, That's I, I, secret sauce. The, the reason that the Batman was in it as well as the Joker, honestly, was to put asses in seats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how I feel about it, and I don't. I don't mind it. You know, we could have put that towards something else in the story. Yeah. Um, you know, and the scene with the, with the car though. I did love that. What was funny is that 
when he punches Harley in the face, it was like the worst sound effect ever. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's Underwater. Like when, when, yeah, like when she's hitting people with her baseball bat later in the movie. It's <laughs> like, it might as well just make it. It sounds so generic. It sounds like Power Rangers. <laughs> right, honestly. <laughs> so it's like the sound happens before she actually hits him almost, but yeah. otherwise. Uh. Let's talk about that for a second, the cheese in this movie. This yeah. movie, I, I, I compared, I love the movie, like I did, it was just a, it was a blast, it was fun. But it's, it's almost like, I, and I made this terrible analogy earlier, and I still stick to it in a weird sort of backwards way, mm. but this movie is almost like if Mortal Kombat fucked the Dark Knight, because there's Ooh. some, there's some, there's really good scenes in this, and there's really intense stuff with Will Smith and stuff like that, but then you get these scenes that are just so cheesy they're, they're so cheesy that I can't wait to watch it laugh at him again like you're talking about Harley Quinn's like when she pulls out her hammer thing or whatever <laughs> and she hits people like you yeah. said it's like bonk it's like that empty plastic hollow bat and yeah. then like uh, crocodile croc killer croc let's talk yeah. about him his lines are funny and he's likable he's the, he's he is the Batista he, uh, character I like, the I movie. Like his lines are funny and likable but at the same time they're terrible too I mean he's like I gotta, I gotta go swim back to the sewers, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like what? Well, the thing is, I, I do like Killer Croc in a way because he is like the Batista. He doesn't really have any lines at all, and I don't know that they probably, I don't know if he's like that in the comic books. I'm not that familiar with Killer Croc to be honest with you, so I don't know exactly what the representation is in the comic books and in the cartoon. But in this film, I felt like he was trying to, you know, portray the Batista. He didn't really have much to say, but when he did talk, it was funny. Yeah. Like it was like it was like that no kind of like like nonsensical, but it was like street. Talk to. He's like, yeah. I'm a good deck in these sewers, like you were talking about and stuff like that. Which, but I was okay with that <clears throat> because when he did say something, it was hilarious. Yeah. You know, so I'm all, I'm all right with that. So yeah, I, I was all right with Killer Croc. I could have done with more Killer Croc, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, they could have cut some of the stuff out and gave me some more Croc. He kind of like a Nestle like Crunch Bar. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know why. But yeah. It is disgusting. <laughs> well, not like, like an old one. But the, the effects were great. Yeah, they went the natural prosthetics and it so paid good, yeah. off it huge. Great, yeah. and, the, and, the, and Killer Croc's one of the things about this movie that the critics just aren't going to get. They aren't going to get that you can watch that and it can be a terrible corny line, but it could still somehow add to the movie and be enjoyable. And that's just the difference between fans and critics. That was one of the all time. You said Batman Forever and Mortal Kombat. Like, my, my take was almost like the usual suspects and Ocean's Eleven fuck Batman Returns. That, that could work too. Like, like that's how I feel. That like, could work too. And there's some Con Air in there too. Con Air, I can Con Put Air. the bunny back in the box. <laughs> Put the bunny back in the box. <laughs> There's some Con Air. Yeah, There's some great Speaking machines. of bunnies. Speaking of pink bunnies. What? Speaking of pink bunnies, we'll segue into Boomerang because he had a pink bunny. Uh, that was a unicorn, man. Is it a unicorn? Yeah, that was, was it? I thought it was a bunny. I don't know. Who gives a Who shit? Who's talking about unicorn? It's a cute <laughs> animal, but Boomerang was great. Oh, I said yeah. this earlier. Jai Corny, I'll let you guys talk about it. The only thing I want to say about it is Jai Corny, he was great in this movie, and normally he's like a pile of empty wood <laughs> but <laughs> I think I think the fact that he's Australian he got to actually play an Australian yeah. and he got to play such a fun character it, he fucking he was huge in this he was great mm -hmm. I think that Captain Boomerang was the definitive loner dude <clears throat> that made sense for his character like, he did not want to be a part of the group he was angry all the time but he was making excuses of why he shouldn't be there he didn't rob anybody he was at home playing pinochle with his mom they're like we have you on camera he's like that's not me <laughs> but there was moments and like when he's in the bar and uh, they get like the, the, the explosive device out of their neck and he, she's like, and you know, uh, Flag is like, you guys are free to go. He like jumps up immediately and takes a six pack of Guinness and walks up the door. And I'm like, that's exactly what it would be like, like if it was me. That's like when somebody tells you in school, like, you guys get to go home early. See ya. Like you're gone. <laughs> like you're not gonna hang out talking to friends. Comes back. Yeah, you're not, yeah. And he comes back later, which was a cool little, you know, moment, like an emotional moment that he was bonding with the team. But as far as that guy goes, Jai Courtney, I really didn't think Jai Courtney was gonna do shit with that role because Captain Boomerang. I'm not again. I'm not familiar with Captain Boomerang. Uh, speaking of Captain Boomerang, though, there is a cool little cameo sequence with the Flash in it, which I guess that's you know he's one of his main villains. But uh, Boomerang, as far as Jai Courtney playing him, did a phenomenal job. He was funny. He was a loner guy. He was literally one of those dudes that you'd hang out with for a little while, and then you look and he'd be like that Metallica song disappear or some shit. Like he'd just be gone. <laughs> like he wouldn't hang out with him for long. But he would drink all your beer. Yeah, he, good performance. Got yeah, good performance. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing to see that he can do a movie and not suck at it. Yeah. You know, I, had, I didn't think that was possible, honestly. Um, for what he was in there, I, again, I could have used some more of him. Yeah. If I, honestly, in my dream for this would be I could have cut the joke around. I would have given some more to the other characters. I, yeah, there. that's true. I would have done oh, that's, that. That's, that's, that's what I would have done. But. Truly. But again, you wouldn't have been excited going in the door. You know what I mean? Because the Joker wouldn't have been there. So yeah, I, see I, why they, I see why they did it. But you're right. If you're gonna if you're gonna take the Joker and put him in a movie, put him in the fucking movie. Yeah. You know. So that, that's one thing. The, the tiny little parts on the side, like Killer Croc. We talked about that Boomerang or whatever. Someone who pissed a lot of people off because um, they said that the character didn't mean anything. Personally, to me, I didn't care. I didn't care about the character when it got introduced. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes um, uh, Slipknot. 
uh, with duality. <laughs> the band. Uh, yeah. <laughs> comes Slipknot, and he's like, oh, by the way, that's Slipknot. He can climb anything. And it's one of those corny moments in the movie or whatever. But then the next thing you know, they go to fight the, those bubbleheads, like the great yeah, like guys that, that were just like completely, oh, by the way, we just assembled the team, and it just so happens that just now a threat is in an empty city where no other superhero was governing it. And didn't you guys look it up? What it's supposed to be like? Hulk. It's Hawkman. Yeah. Hulk, yeah. <clears throat> Midway City, like Hawk Girl's territory or whatever. So, uh, then <laughs> Boomerang's talking to Slipknot and he's like, you won't get out of here, right? <laughs> he's like, and then boom, he's fucking dead. Out of nowhere. Like, it did, the character didn't do shit he except for climb a fucking building for five seconds and then he's gone. He reminded me of the Native American for Predator. I was alright with it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was alright with it though because the whole point was is that they had to show that those fucking neck bombs worked. So yeah. he did, he played his purpose. I liked it. Like, uh, the only part that I like I liked about that is it does show like Captain Boomerang just being another badass moment of him like, hey, I'm going to be the cool kid in school and I'm going to go with you if you do this. If you prank the teacher, I'm going to go do it with you. And then he like convinces the kid to go do it and he's like I'm not gonna fucking do that you're stupid <laughs> like, I knew it was gonna happen yeah. but I like that That I mean, yeah, it was a throwaway character and they were just doing it as an example of I think they showed it for comedic effect and as well as the you mentioned the bomb things it, that it was a real thing so. and you had to show that boomerang is really just a total dick yeah. 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 it was, was kind of like that time that you were like hey man let's take these women's laxatives and we were like 14 and see what happens <laughs> and you didn't take them but I did later that night I read Lobster I shit my asshole off uh, you called me you're like I fucking hate you beyond my dad had to come in the restroom and be like son are you okay you I was like fucking 12 you Red Lobster, you went to Gold Crown, like, dude, I had just gone. No, dude, it was Red Lobster, I had oh. a lobster pizza. I oh, that's right, yeah, it was a pizza. It was like all of a sudden, it was like, dun dun dun. Yeah, you got mad because it's dad, time to shit, Mac. Your dad didn't put it in a box, so you didn't get to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> you were so, mad. But, so, Lionel, what would you think? Did you think that, did you like the boomerang uh, slipknot scene, or what did you think about slipknot? I thought you said it. Well, I thought you, I thought you were Tell us. Elaborate. We all did. I thought you were going to elaborate. Okay, that's No, right. I wasn't elaborating. <laughs> okay, there's not much to elaborate on. Yeah, there's not, there's really not much yeah, to elaborate. Right. So he let's talk there. about the villain. The atrocious, bad, terrible, awful, well, no we missed, good, uh, very good, one. bad day. Oh. Uh, well, okay, Katana. I don't care at all. I mean, she just, again, like, they're sitting on the, 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 the helicopter, and all of a sudden, Joel Kinnaman's like, oh, by the way, that's Katana. Her husband's trapped in her short. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we don't have time. We've given everybody else six intros. We don't have time to give her one. And I, I just didn't, I never cared at all about her. I know some people loved it and wanted more. I just, I don't care. I, Katana, I, I had never heard of her before. Like, honestly, I had never even heard of her. I, I thought she was kick-ass. I thought she was a really cool character. She didn't speak English at all, which it didn't like, really bother me one bit when they, you know, they had subtitles. But it was still a cool character to have that like that badassery she got my like Uma Thurman and Kill Bill or something like she had that coolness going for her. and uh, you're right though it was a quick little um hey he, you know her husband's soul is in there and she talks to it all the time and he's like well you know what they say about crazy <laughs> but, and, and, but I mean speaking of Katana really quick because I don't like we don't want to take all day to talk about Katana but uh Flag Flag was good. I liked, uh, you know, I think he did a really good job with that part, uh, Joel Kinnerman. I think I, I really thought he was going to do a shitty job with that. And honestly, the the uh, idea behind what he was doing it for, like, I liked it. I thought he had the emotional uh, range to do that. Even though I, I don't necessarily like how he spoke in the film. Like, I, just, I thought sometimes that was a little bit out of place and out of character. But still, it, it, it did work. I mean, I was surprised. He's himself. He's not much of an actor. Actor. Uh, yeah. Every time I've seen him, he sees the same person over and over. But in this particular role as generic military guy, kind of, it worked. For me, yeah, Joe Kinnaman is a guy that I think has a lot of talent. Mm. His accent always throws people off him. I, mean, I think he was bad in Robocop, but I think he was great in The Killing. I think he was great in um, that movie. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the, we did it on Netflix forever ago. Uh, it's fucking... It's almost called Suicide Squad, so I can't remember. He's been in good roles, is what I'm trying to say. Joe Kinnaman's a good actor, but his accent sometimes fails him. And this, it's like a country uh, dude accent, and yeah. it kind of fails him a little bit. But he's okay. I like Joe Kinnaman. It's just he always seems to fail himself in certain roles. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but talking about that, the role with Enchantress, the villain, <clears throat> as everybody knows, I don't know why it was even kept secret. It's mm -hmm. a stupid-ass villain. Enchantress <laughs> looks really cool. The, uh, she does a really good job a, a, as when she's like this scary grudge type character who can float out and get these military files like in, in, in like mm -hmm. an instant. She's really good. Then when she goes like, oh, I've got to run away and go get my brother now. And like, and then and then Amanda Waller stabbing this fucking paper bag in a box, and it's so corny and Batman Forever. It's like I was saying, it's just so terrible that that whole idea and the whole point behind it. And then she goes and gets her villain giant 
CGI shack, and then like they, they, they tear up a fucking airport or a, a train station. It was just awful. Yeah, I, I didn't really like the, the villains in this. As far as Enchantress and her brother goes, are completely throwaway. I, I don't even know, like the whole idea behind the metahuman threat, and that's why they had to uh, like get together and gather up the Suicide Squad. It, it felt like it happened so fast. It was just so quick. All of a sudden, there's a metahuman threat. So this team makes sense, right? I mean, I, but that that the Enchantress. He's a cool character, and you're right, the, the grudge parts, I don't, like, the grudge scares me, and she was scary, but she was hot, too, it was, it was I was having a, like, an internal struggle with myself, man. but, it was still one of those, like, those villains, though, like, it just, it didn't really, it was, it did, not that it didn't fit, it just felt corny and cheesy, and that, that part, I do agree, the, the, the villain, villainess and villain was overall just, it was forgettable. Like, I walked out, I forgot about, like, you know, you're talking about this Aztec lost god, Egyptian shit, and it's like, okay, well, cool. I mean, you know, neat. Yeah, well, I, like, I will go back to what I originally said with some of the writing issues on there. I think that in this case here, you didn't really need a great overall plot as much as you really just wanted an excuse to blow shit up. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, like the point, like you said, we put this team together really quick here. And so suddenly Shakira invades Midway City and <laughs> we're just trying to figure it out. I mean, she's just, she's literally like hula dancing like the entire movie. <laughs> and it looks gorgeous, it but what the actual fuck are you doing? Belly yeah. dancing. It's terrible. That was, when I was watching that, I openly laughed out loud and yeah. I was like, God, this movie is so weird. Well, it was Because she's like, I'm going to get you with my <laughs> special <laughs> magic <laughs> power. But she was so she she would have got me though. You know what? Tum, just hum, just hum. Yeah, we were all supposed to like fucking take her down, and I swear to God, she was doing that dance like, yeah. And then it was a straight up Ghostbuster scene. Yeah, where all of a like, sudden, yeah. she comes out and she's like, I know what you all want. And then like they all have these flashback scenes that are terrible. Like we already knew what they wanted. Like we didn't need that. That was a terrible moment. And then the, of course, why, why the fuck are you gonna do a wormhole in the sky again? Like mm -hmm. that's terrible. Can I ask a question? What the fuck? Where was the machine? She said she was gonna build a machine that destroy war. Like all I saw was a wiggly dick that was like a like a CG like a weird wiggly dick up in the air. Like I didn't see anything. It was a wavable waving arms inflatable wacky yeah. thing. Inflatable two man. That's all it was. There was nothing. There was no machinery at all. Yeah, but, uh, but you know that's fine. And, and uh, let's talk really quick because uh, Amanda Waller. We yeah. haven't mentioned Amanda Waller. Amanda great. Waller is amazing. She was. Uh, Denzel Washington with some Samuel L. Jackson, and she made Martha Stewart look weak. <laughs> like, she was all like Martha Stewart's like that, like a fucking mean person, but she was like a great, cool ass character that you know under fire she had it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there was, like, I know it was cheesy in its own way, but I liked it when she goes up and talks to the Enchantress, and she's like, "Do your worst, bitch." I like that. Like I yeah. thought that was cool because she just didn't give a fuck. And she 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 played better as a villain than the Enchantress did because they all yeah. hated her so mm -hmm. much, and she was such a and straight she was up bitch to everybody. Yeah. yeah, she was really 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 great. She was, I guess, in a sense, the true villain. She yeah. did a great job as Amanda Waller. What do you think? I, I think she was one of the better parts of the movie overall. I mean, if you're going to take away and talk so much about Will Smith and uh, Margot Robbie, Amanda Waller's character, uh, Viola Davis, was just as big a part and just as great a performance as any of them in there. Yeah, Absolutely, really for sure. And what's weird, the sheriff from Stranger Things, did you notice that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was the bureaucrat that. guy. That was kind of crazy. But yeah, so the ending comes out, right? And, and the only good thing about the ending, because it's this terrible Ghostbusters rip-off sequence where they're all like, let's all go at her together. Two good things came from that. Diablo had a oh, badass right. scene. Yeah, There's right. a great thing where he's like, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to fight, and it's kind of corny because all of a sudden he's just there and he's like, okay, I'll go with you guys. Mm. And then he does this love thing with his fire. And, and But then in the bar, for me, I was confused about this movie. Halfway through, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, the, it's not that the critics are wrong. There's a lot of terrible shit in this movie, but I'm still having a good time because mm. the characters are so good. When they go into the bar and they sit there and they have that little moment, it's almost like they were hiding from the movie. Like, let's step out of this movie for a second and gather ourselves. And they made the audience fall in love with them all over again. Mm. And then we were all on board again. And then they go out and they have this crazy, weird fight <clears throat> sequence or whatever. Yeah. But that scene inside the bar was really, really integral to the like, movie. It was like cheers. It was it was like yeah. years. And Diablo <laughs> tells his story about how, his backstory about why he doesn't want to fight. So they kept Diablo on ice. <laughs> uh -huh. there For this whole movie, and they saved him up for the perfect moment when he actually takes on the villain and you see how badass he was. Yeah. That, was that was a great breakout scene for him. Yeah, there was a, you know, the, the guy that played that part of Diablo had a fire representation of this part. Uh, no, like, you know. It was straight fire. I, I like, like uh, I fucking stop with that shit. Uh, yeah. He was straight on fire. Oh, God. Uh, but no, uh, in fuego. Fire yeah. fights. Uh, but no, listen, the thing is, like, there was. Twisted fire starter. You're a twisted fire starter. <laughs> uh, the thing with Diablo is, is Diablo was one of those characters, like, yes, I felt like he was very throwaway at first. At first, I did. Because yeah. he really wasn't doing anything. He really wasn't adding any, any punch to the, to the overall flavor of the squad. But when you find out why he's holding back and what he's done, 
like there's more depth to him. And as far as the actor that portrays him, he does it in such a way. I thought that in the bar, it was a very poignant scene. I've talked to them about it off camera, but there was a poignant scene when, when Will Smith walks in and he says, you know, honor among thieves and he's cheering everybody. And then they're talking about their own experiences. And when Diablo mentions that, you know, I killed women and children. And he's like, you know, even Will Smith's like, I never killed women and children. And Captain Boomerang and all of them are kind of like looking at him like, we're monsters, but you're worse than we are. You're like a terrible person because you kill women and children. But you act, you know, he's like, I can't help it. You know, when I lose control, when I get mad. And when that flashback sequence happens with his wife and kids, and he was upset that she was going to take the kids and leave him because he was so part of that gangster life, that gangster way, you know, he... You know, he lost control and killed her. Mm -hmm. And he set his house on fire and he turned himself in. At the, you know, that's how he actually came to be a part of the squad. He turned himself in. That part, and then you see, like it, it just really spoke volumes as far as the guy that was playing him. Like he was able to bring not only the emotion as he was portraying, but to get those emotions from Will Smith and even Captain Boomerang. And they kind of look, kind of look like they were teary-eyed. You know what? Will Smith in that part with his dead shot looking at him, he reminded me of the dude from Pursuit of Happiness. I was like, <laughs> you can solve that a Rubik's cube, no problem. <laughs> dude, that but, part really got. Yeah, to it me. really was a great scene. And then when, as far as at the end sequence when he turns into this big demon, flaming monsters, and you can see like that's what he's been holding back this yeah. entire time. And I was like, wow. It kind of reminded me of the shock factor, the epicness of uh, Civil War when Ant-Man turns into Giant Man. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's fucking badass. I mean, yeah. we all kind of expected that from Civil War. Maybe not as on the scale, but it was close to it. Yeah. So, uh, I thought what was nice was, uh, like you said, a character that was almost a throwaway in the very beginning of it because not a main DC character. Nobody really knew much about Diablo. But for him to actually come out of nowhere and have an actual real redemptive arc mm -hmm. um, was really surprising. And one of the brighter points of, uh, of the story, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. David Ayer does do that. He does really good with urban characters. I like that a lot. Bring yeah. them to life. So that's something that he does. I would have loved to have Diablo in it more. Like, just, you know, his acting was so good. So. And then, of mm -hmm. course, you got the, the, the penumptual scene where uh, Harley Quinn goes up and she's like, no, fuck these guys. And you think she's going to do the typical Harley Quinn thing. She kneels down and you've got this awesome just... It, it ended the movie in such a fun way. Like, mm -hmm. like, it was such a cool way to do it. Like, Harley Quinn goes up, she kneels down, and she's like, no, fuck that, and she katanas the chick. It's awesome. Yeah, anyway, even though that moment was cheesy, and well, what she says, you messed with my friends, and then yeah. she pulls the katana, it kind of reminded me, it was it like, it, it, it did, it fits so well in the movie, as far, it kind of reminded me of the Stranger Things Netflix series, because, you know, that was kind of, it had its own, like, 80s cheese moments to it, but it yeah. worked in that setting, and that's when she, like, kneels down to the Enchantress, and she picks the katana up, and she's like, there's one thing, though, you mess with my friends, and, like, she slices her ass up and, like, takes her heart out, <laughs> which I like that scene, like, I mean, yeah. it, 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 like, as, as corny as it is, I like that the camaraderie had built, even, yeah. you know, it was only a two-hour and ten-minute movie, so you would think that the camaraderie would be over several films, that they would have this, you know, arc about each other, that they love each other, but it was, it was cool, because they were going through this, and I think that they all recognize that they're all freaks, and they're all outcasts of society, and nobody likes them, they're all going to be bad guys, no matter what it goes on, and they recognize that each other, and so, when Diablo says I'm not going to lose another family as cheesy as that sounds when he said it on camera it worked in that setting so yeah that that part kind of took it away from me a little bit there was a little bit too cheesy you heartless bitch that's, like, <laughs> that's, where, that's where it goes it's just, it's just a little bit too campy yeah. a little bit too cheesy right there but that, that last sequence there kind of devolved into I hate to compare it to this I really do because I like this movie but fucking fan four stick Oh god! I never watched oh, it. Oh, no, I, I did. I so actually, bad, dude. Don't watch it. I uh, I paid money to see it. Oh my no. god! Oh. You yeah. are one of the same. I am a, I am a self-loathing <laughs> cinema bitch. I'll tell you that. Pathetic <laughs> loser. Yeah. Uh, it was Some men just want to watch the so. world burn. Big one. Yeah, Big L. Take this L and have it in your pocket. Yeah. Go That's okay. Go over. So what was your comparison? No, I was just. I, it just it seemed too much like that. Where it was just way too cheesy. Yeah. But I, 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 I build up to something that really made no sense or was never explained, and it's just like. Boop, and then it's over. Did yeah, you think so. the camaraderie? Did you? Did you like? I mean, I know what you're saying. I mean, no, I mean that, all that. To, do you think the that, camaraderie was forced? All that makes sense, a little bit um, between some people. Like, do you think um, that it was like at the end of the film that they had to be all like gelled together? The, you know, like so they had. Well, to that's the these, idea. Yeah. So yeah, you kind of have to do I, that. I get that. And so so then the, the fallout from this is kind of cool. I like the South Paul kind of reference where as it you know Amanda Waller screwed everybody over fine and like she only gave him ten years off their like triple life sentences and shit like that. <clears throat> but you do get to see Deadshot does get to see his daughter for a minute. Uh, which almost doesn't fall true to Amanda Waller's character because she's like, I can do that. But when I think it's black, you, just, you needed some sort of a happy character or yeah. a happy ending, so they kind of yeah. they gave him a moment with her. But it was cool how you saw a flag come in and they were like bros now, like and, that, and yeah. he was yeah. like protecting him. Uh, that was a cool scene. Uh, the fallout also because he was the Killer Crocs fallout scene was amazing. I love that. He's scene. sitting in a cell, he's got a couch, and he's just watching some, some like a rap video, some ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great video. <laughs> that was good. And then ultimately, 
Finally, the last scene, you see Harley back in jail again, and Joker comes to rescue her. End of the movie. The, the thing is about the end of the movie, as far as like, the sequences go, and the way it all adds up, and the way that it falls out, like you said, the fallout of this film. Um, I'm okay with it. Fallout falls out. Falls out. It falls out. Uh, war never changes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, anyway, but the thing is, uh, I didn't mind the end sequence. I mean, you're talking about cheesy and corny. It was a little corny and cheesy, right? But I do like the fact that when you have the moments with Will Smith and his daughter, and they're sitting there, and when you're talking about the bro-ship between Flag and Deadshot, it's there, and it's all, it's been, like, it, there's, like, this mutual respect, because at the beginning of the film, um, Flag basically tells Deadshot, you know, you're a piece of shit, you'll run, and you'll, you, you're basically an assassin with a credit card. There's nothing about you that's redeemable, there's nothing about you that's heroic, you're a piece of shit. And when the, when the shooting starts, you'll run. And he proved him wrong, and they have this mutual respect. As far as Killer Croc goes, it was a funny little, because he asked for a DVD player. And I really, you know, as my, it kind of made me a little emotional, because I'll tell you why, it's not meant to be, it's not meant to make you emotional but the truth is they treated Croc like a piece of garbage they treated him like less than human because he looks the way he does just because of a mutation so they would feed him like you know raw pig whatever it was like big and they would they would give him nothing they would just there was no bed he was just living in the sewer so when they gave him a couch and a TV he was actually being recognized and respected as a living being which I like that like I thought that was a cool scene oh, and then when the when the when uh, Joker comes in to rescue uh, Harley Quinn <clears throat> it was okay I was cool but I just didn't like the fact when did he get time to put Joker on his vest? Like, yeah. when did he get time to get to embroider that? Like, he just, like, we know he's all Joker. about aesthetics. Yeah, so, anyway, that's my opinion on he's it. He's all show. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I mean, the other parts with the, you know, some of the prisoners getting their, you know, uh, nicer things, like you said, with Deadshot and with Killer Croc and all, that was great. Um, I don't like the idea of the Joker breaking in to bust Harley out, because I don't think he would ever do that. I don't either. I don't either. And that was, that was one of my main complaints, because I don't think the Joker would give a fuck enough to do it. Like, I mean, again, that goes back to the characterization that Leto and Ayers have for this Joker, that he's yeah. madly in love. And by the way, I was just going to say, did you notice that Captain Boomerang didn't get shit? He was just talking in the cell. He's like, let me out. Oh, yeah, he was just, like, mad as shit. <laughs> yeah. He didn't get nothing. And then, ultimately, the last scene, well, first off, the credits, the beginning and end credits. Like, when oh, it comes yeah. up and it's got that heathen song, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was badass, yeah, it was man. It was, a, it was a great way to end a movie. Even if you hated the movie, you felt good when that came yeah, on. I, I love the... You walk the, out in the theater with that song. Yeah, I love the neon aesthetic they put over top of both mm -hmm. those things. But anyways, there is a mid credit scene in a DC movie, which is strange, but it comes in, Amanda Waller's sitting there, Batman comes in, Bruce Wayne, and uh, you get one more scene with Affleck and basically she's giving him files on the Justice League and Enchantress and shit like that but the cool thing was was when he walks out he was like wrap it up bitch <laughs> pretty much, just pretty much what he said. Yeah. he's like you know me and my friends will shut it down if you don't do it for us because he was basically saying shut your fucking freak show down or I'm gonna get these guys together because he and she's like you need to stop working nights. And he, I, I want to be like, you need to stop fucking being working at all, bitch. Wait, like spending your nights. Yeah, like, you know, it was like, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> but, I mean, it just, it was a cool little scene. It was a cool little, like, throwback and, or a nod to the, the fact that we're all tying it together. Everything's coming together. And this was a pre-movie before Justice League, so we can see that the files that he was having, there was Enchantress, there was uh, The Flash and Aquaman. No, this came after Justice Or, no, I, I thought, sorry. I thought yeah, yeah, but, man, yeah. the file that she gives him, it's got, you know, Enchantress, Flash, and yeah. Aquaman. So that's something where he got the information originally to find out where they were. I thought that was a cool scene, and uh, honestly, I thought it was a cool little, you know, gift to fans. So, yeah. I was happy that it was there. Blake? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, you said pretty much other things to say about that. Um, it was a neat little scene there that didn't take a whole lot to do. Um, yeah, it was kind of, you know, foreshadowing a little bit towards Justice League, so. That was nice to see. I know you guys have your own opinions on it. Uh, the uh, music, the, the selection of the music. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed it. There was a, there was a lot of a, a mashup and a mix-up of uh, 70s, today's, um, yesterday's, <laughs> spinning the clip from the 80s, 70s, and 90s, the end of the day. Uh, but it, like, there's a lot of mash, and I think it works well for the film. I think that the, the film is so mashed up and it's so weird and out there and different, the plot, that the, that the music actually works. Now, I will say that the main theme sequence, like just the orchestra, I love that the most. I love the ominous kind of, uh, you know, when, when Deadshot's talking about his daughter and it's like this cool like little melancholy uh, tune comes in, mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. But other than that, when they throw Eminem in there and they throw some shit from the 70s in there, you know, I know people are going to bitch about the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff that they did copy or use some song selections that the Guardians of the Galaxy did. But it works well for the film, and I thought that everything else, I think it all balanced out at the end. Yeah, it worked really well. Like you said, the score was really good as well. I'm surprised with that because I wouldn't expect that out of a movie like this. 
Yeah, I could have said it better myself, guys. So overall, basically, this is a movie with a billion problems. Can't blame critics for not liking it, but fans are going to love it. For me, I said it before, This is the, my best interpretation of it is that it's a really badass Justice League. They did a great job casting. Uh, even with the Joker, I can't say they cast the leader wrong. I just think they picked a bad the wrong movie. representation of Joker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that this is a movie, uh, it, it, it's a really, really, really good character movie trapped inside of a cheesy 90s movie and that's all right with fans critics aren't gonna love it they don't have to fans are gonna love it i think i said it before and i'll say it again god i love being a turtle <laughs> 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 no i mean you know, like, i had to throw it because ah, 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 oh shit i just went <laughs> no, listen, uh, overall, I liked it, I enjoyed it, I had fun with it, it was 8.5 for me. I really got into it, like, I mean, there was, there was, like, a lot of these DC characters I didn't even know, and I thought they brought them to the forefront and introduced them in a way that was easier for me to get behind and say, you know what, not only do I like you as the, the character you're portraying, but I also, um, respect you. And, like, I can actually relate to you in ways that I couldn't relate to other characters that they had introduced before in other, you know, Marvel or DC movies. Or I had a harder time at least relating to them. These characters uh, with the Suicide Squad are very, very far and away what people would be normally used to as far as, like, a squad group, you know, going out and fighting evil. And I think that Will Smith phrased it the best when he said, this is a group of bad guys, bad, versus evil. So it's not good versus bad, it's bad versus evil. So, you know, it's not the worst you can be but it's pretty close to it. So, I mean, I, overall, the, 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 the score, the theme, um, the characterizations of each one, I loved it all. 8.5 is a solid score for me, so. Yeah, it was, uh, overall, it was, so many people said before that it's a total mess through most of it. And I'll agree with that. Most of it is. But it's a really fun mess. Mm -hmm. And so I would happily go see it again, and I recommend you too also. What's your score? Oh, I'll give it an 8. 8, okay. It's a 7.5. 8. 8.5. It's all balanced out. Blake's the middle guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always skiing. Guys, we love your fucking faces. Comment down below any questions, thoughts, concerns, sexual pictures life going. that you have. <laughs> Put it down below. We love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some goddamn wham up in you.